And with that, we'll get started. So thanks everybody for uh, joining us this week. This week, it is all about bass. So, um, you know, I thought with most of the, uh, most of the car audio enthusiasts out there, I feel like anyway, um, you know, get into car audio in the first place, probably because of bass. Uh, I know for me as a kid, I first got interested in car audio at like eight, nine years old. I was always into cars and things like that. But um, the first time I heard a car that had, you know, a big system cruising down the street or something like that, you know, you hear booming bass from two blocks away. That's what piqued my interest. That's what got me into um, this industry. So uh, I feel like every good car audio system or really every music reproduction system, whether it's in a car or not, has a strong foundation of great bass, right? And so it's one of those things where uh, I felt like, why not do a training on just that? So we're going to talk about bass today. We are going to talk about a handful of different things, um, but mainly what we're talking about is the technologies that go into um, making great bass in a vehicle, the uh, ability to add bass to OEM systems, the processors we offer, and the amplifiers we offer. So those are kind of the, uh, the, the subject matter for today. Um, so with that, let's uh, dig into things. Like Chris said, if you have questions on Facebook, if you have questions on Zoom, uh, on Facebook, go ahead and drop it into the comments. Chris will do his best to monitor those and bring them up uh, when relevant. And on Zoom, uh, make sure to use the chat feature and uh, make sure to have yourself muted if you are on our Zoom call, please. So let's dig in. So first thing we're gonna talk about is some of the technologies that audio control has that help make great bass possible in the automotive environment. So uh, the two things that I wanna talk about first are the Epicenter and AccuBase. Now the Epicenter is also a product line, obviously, um, but there is technology that goes with that. So I wanted to touch on those a little bit. So uh, let's have a look here. So the first thing we are looking at today is basically the difference between the Epicenter and the AccuBase. So when you're looking at these, you know, I think there's a lot of confusion out there and I've touched on this before in previous trainings and, you know, when talking about certain products and things like that, that there is a big difference between AccuBase and Epicenter. Um, but I still like to bring it up just in case somebody's in this training that maybe hasn't seen one of our previous ones. For those of you that have heard me talk about this before, it'll just be a, a brief touch up on it. Um, but really what I like to talk about is just the difference between the two because they are completely different. The uh, AccuBase technology that's built into our products does not do the same thing that the Epicenter product does. And the Epicenter does not do what AccuBase does, okay? They are two different things. So um, that's one of the things that I wanna talk about first. Um, the Epicenter and AccuBase are both designed to enhance bass one way or the other, um, but from kind of you know, different sides of the equation. So let's dig into what that looks like a little bit and what I mean. So when you're looking at uh, the Epicenter, the product itself, so we'll touch on the actual products themselves here in just a second. But when you're looking at the epicenter and what it does, essentially what an epicenter is doing is taking a um, signal that's incoming, whatever your source signal is. And what it's doing is it's essentially looking upstream in the audio mix and seeing what the lowest bass frequency is that's present, okay? And then what the epicenter is gonna look to do is essentially what I call manufacture bass or inject bass into the audio stream where there was none. That's a really basic, simple answer to what this thing does. Um, how it does it is, again, it's looking upstream at the audio mix. It's seeing what the lowest present bass frequency is, and then it's putting bass in one octave below that. So if the song that you're playing only has bass down to 80 hertz, the epicenter is gonna manufacture bass at 40 hertz and put it back into your um, signal path. So it's a pretty cool piece. We've had the epicenter around for a long time. A lot of you are familiar with it. Some of you are familiar with it, but have never used one before. Um, until you really have one in a vehicle or in a sound room or get a chance to play with it, it's kind of hard to understand a little bit um, exactly what it sounds like and how it does what it does. Um, a couple of notes about the epicenter. You know, like we talked about, this is looking upstream at the audio mix. So it needs to see a little bit higher frequencies in order to do its job, okay? So if you hook this up with an aftermarket head unit and that aftermarket head unit has a subwoofer preamp output, 
that's fine to use it. I'm not saying you have to use something else, but I am saying that we want to make sure that you use a high enough crossover frequency or defeat the crossover in the head unit altogether. And the reason being, again, the epicenter is looking upstream at the audio. We need it to be able to see up high enough in the, uh, the audio spectrum there to be able to do its job. If you send this piece in a, a, a low past 80 hertz signal, it's only able to see up to about 80 hertz, right? So it, it can't possibly do its job well if there's bass in that song, if the lowest bass in that song is above the crossover frequency. So whenever we're talking about the epicenter, we always say we want the epicenter to go before our crossovers um, so that we make sure that we cross everything over after the epicenter or in the amplifier itself. And these days, pretty much every amplifier has some sort of crossover built into it anyway. So it makes, you know, it makes sense to do it that way. So you can see with the little graphs on your screen there, the difference between kind of how an epicenter works and how AccuBase works. AccuBase is a technology. AccuBase is something we build into products. It is not a product itself. There's not a product in our lineup called the AccuBase like there is with the epicenters, okay? Um, but what AccuBase is designed for is to help compensate for base roll-off which is a you know, feature, you could call it, that plagues a lot of factory sound systems. If you're not familiar with bass roll-off, bass roll-off is essentially, you know, how we describe it anyway, is any factory sound system where the bass rolls off at a certain uh, volume level or plateaus at a certain volume level. So the example I usually give is, let's say you have a factory radio that goes up to 100, and at volume 70, the bass doesn't get any louder. That's because the manufacturers of that vehicle have programmed that radio to do that, right? Why would they do that? Because they're not planning on you adding a, a big aftermarket amp and subwoofer. They are planning on you keeping it factory and they don't want to warranty out some, you know, basic factory paper speakers that couldn't handle bass at those higher volumes. So basically they do it as a protection feature is the idea behind bass roll off. Um, some vehicles have a dynamic EQ where it's not quite that simple. It doesn't just roll off at a higher volume. It actually changes with the volume where maybe there's even a slight boost at low volume and a cut at high volume. So there's a lot of different things that you could describe as bass roll off, but that gives you the general idea. Uh, AccuBase is made to compensate for that. So if you do have a system or you've ever put one in or heard a system where, you know, at low volume, the bass was really, really great. It sounded really good, even up to maybe mid volume, it sounds great. But as you get into those higher volumes where maybe you want it at that listening level, um, you know, the impress your friends volume, uh, that's where the bass starts to kind of drop off or it doesn't get any louder past a certain point. You keep turning that knob, but the bass stopped getting loud 20 turns ago, um, that's a system with bass roll off. And so that's where AccuBase comes into play. AccuBase is easy to set up and it essentially helps compensate for systems with bass roll off. So let's get into a little bit more um, about adding bass to OEM systems. And before we get into the actual products that make that possible, um, one of the things I want to talk about a little bit is just having the right tools for the job. So there's a few tools on your screen right now uh, that are readily available from audio control. One of those being the DMRTA, uh, shown on your screen in the Pro Kit, we call it. Uh, the Pro Kit comes with not only the DMRTA, but a RTA microphone, uh, testing probes, um, RCA probes, USB cables, power supplies, everything that you could need uh, to use the DMRTA effectively. So if you are uh, a professional installer or if you are just a hardcore uh, hobbyist or do-it-yourselfer, the DMRTA is an invaluable tool if you're doing anything with automotive electronics and audio systems. Essentially, the DMRTA is an oscilloscope, an RTA, a voltage meter, a polarity checker, and an SPL meter all in one piece. Um, if you want to know more about the DMRTA in particular, if you want to more know detail about it, uh, know more detail about it, we've done trainings on the DMRTA in the past. Um, we have several of them on past weeks. So you can go to our Facebook page, our main audio control Facebook page, and click on the video section, and you can see all of the past weekly web trainings and go back and watch that one if you like. Down below at the bottom of the screen there is also one of our SA series microphones. Um, these are really cool for the guys that don't necessarily need an oscilloscope. They're just looking for a um, you know nice RTA microphone that they can use with their tablet or their smartphone. Uh, the SA series microphones are great. We have a couple models of those. Uh, they plug straight into an iOS device and essentially you can get a nice quality RTA on your uh, iPhone or iPad screen. Now, is that RTA the same or as good as the DMRTA? No, 
okay? It's, it's not the same thing, but it is a heck of a lot better than trying to use the microphone that's built into your uh, iPad or your iPhone and trying to use that to RTA a vehicle with. So um, having the right tools for the job is invaluable. Uh, I would say a good percentage of the tech calls we get on a daily basis would not happen at all if they had the correct tools to do the testing first. Um, a lot of the, the calls that we get, unfortunately, the technician is having to um, somewhat guess, you know, as to what wires they're tapped into or what that signal looks like that they grabbed because they just don't know. They don't have the tools to find out. So um, I'm not going to spend all day talking about test tools and all that stuff, but I think it is important to note that having the right tools for the job makes doing this job uh, infinitely easier. So uh, if you want to learn more about the DMRTA or any of that stuff too, of course, it's all on our website and all that. And off to the side there is the DMRTA uh, checklist, which is a PDF that we created uh, to help with integrating into OEM systems. And it's a free document. You can grab it on our website. It's also in our Facebook groups. And basically what it does is it helps a tech that's not familiar with the vehicle that they're working on to walk through that vehicle. Um, and what I mean by walk through is by working through that worksheet, by the end of that worksheet, you know exactly what you're tying into for signal, what type of signal you're dealing with, high or low level, is there you know, an EQ present, do I need Accubase, do I need an Epicenter, blah, 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 blah. So it's a, it's a very helpful worksheet. It's something we created just to help out technicians and, and give some direction. And like I said, it's free of charge. So. Um, so then let's move on to the actual products that we use for OEM integration. So the first one I'm going to bring up is the LC2i. Um, many of you are going to be familiar with the LC2i. It's been a best-selling active high-to-low converter for a while now. It's kind of the industry standard when it comes to adding a base package to a factory sound system or OEM head units, that sort of thing. Um, and what makes the LC2i special is a couple of things. Um, one of those is that it has 40 volts of input handling uh, capability. So what does 40 volts mean? It essentially means 400 watts, uh, meaning you can use an LC2i in pretty much any vehicle on the road. Uh, there's not a factory sound system out there that has 400 watts per channel. So you can literally tie into the signal going to that factory amplified um, sound system or, or that factory amplified subwoofer if the car has one. If the car already has a factory amplified woofer and it's got some decent power going to it, but your customer or you want bigger bass and you're gonna add a, a real sub amp, you could grab that signal and feed it straight into an LC2i and get a nice clean low level signal coming out the other side. So it really opens up the possibilities and you don't have to worry about where you grab signal from so much because this piece will handle it. The other thing that's always made the LC2i unique is Accubase. Accubase is that patented technology I talked about earlier, uh, helping to compensate for base roll off. So uh, Accubase is built into the LC2i. There are two controls for Accubase. One of them is threshold. Threshold is on the side of the product, right over here in between the RCA uh, outputs. Um, threshold, the easiest way to think of it is when does Accubase kick in? Okay, uh, the other control for Accubase is on top here. It just says the word Accubase, but it's a level control. This is how much. So when does Accubase kick in? How much does it need to kick in? So the idea is if you are setting up a vehicle that has base roll off, I'll use the example I used earlier, your volume goes up to uh, let's say 100 and at 70 the base rolls off. So we wanna start with the AccuBase control itself, the level at 12 o'clock, start with the threshold all the way down, which is gonna be to the left. Um, and then after you get the volume on the factory radio up to that 70 mark where we know that the base started to drop off, now we're gonna slowly in increase threshold. And I say slowly because it takes a second to kick in and you need to listen for it, okay? So slowly turn up threshold until you start to hear the bass kick back into the system. Once it's done that, you wanna to stop touching threshold and you wanna to go to the level control on top. This is where we're gonna say how much bass to kick in at volume 70, right? Or at 70 and above. So. Again, when does it kick in, how much? Once you're done setting those two up, you should be able to turn that factory volume knob pretty much all the way up, all the way down, within the limits of the system, of course, and the bass should sound natural. It shouldn't kick in too early and have a weird loud spot in the middle of the volume range. There shouldn't be a slump where the bass gets quieter and then louder. It should be consistent from low volume to high volume. We should have the right amount of bass all the way through. If we don't, if there's too much or it, it drops out for a second or something like that, then we have these controls not set up correctly. So that's an important part of AccuBase is how to set it up. I think a lot of guys realize that the technology is there, but unfortunately a lot of them uh, don't know how to set it up correctly uh, or 
haven't set it up correctly in the past. The other thing that's neat on the LC2i is GTO. Uh, GTO is great turn on. This is our DC offset based turn on technology. So what this is doing you guys is looking at the high level input and um, once it sees a signal there, it's looking for anything above six volts on those speaker leads to tell the LC2i to turn on. Um, this not only has the uh, remote input capability as well, but also a remote out to turn on that amplifier or amplifiers. So some pretty cool stuff there. There are two trigger options there. So you can either use GTO or you can use the standard remote input. Um, no matter which input or, or turn on uh, method you choose, the remote output will always function. So whether you're using GTO or a remote in, that remote out is still gonna turn on those amplifiers. Um, one other thing I'll mention on the LC2i is over here on the side, the base control. So that's an option. That's something that you can add. So you can purchase an ACR1 dash control knob separately and plug this in. Looks like a telephone jack basically. And now you've got a nice all metal base control knob for the front of the vehicle. Uh, makes it easy. Obviously when you're adding to an OEM system, a lot of times it's nice to have separate control over that amp and subwoofer. So uh, moving on to something new, the new LC2i Pro. So let's talk about that a little bit. Here's the new 2i Pro for those that haven't seen it. Um, we're pretty excited about this, like it shows on your screen there. And like uh, Chris talked about before we started, we are now shipping these, been shipping them for about a week or so. And the response so far is off the charts. We're super, super excited. Um, we're thrilled to get this out into the market. And the technology that's built into this basically takes everything we just talked about with the LC2i and makes it even a little bit better. So like we just talked about with the LC2i, this has the 40 volts of input handling capability. Um, this also has AccuBase built in, but one of the cool new things on the 2i Pro, as opposed to the 2i, is that our AccuBase controls are now right on top. So there isn't one on the side and one on top. They're both right on the top of the unit, so it's a little bit easier. And <clears throat> they are labeled as threshold and level. So they're a little bit more clearly labeled uh, to help understanding with those guys that haven't used it before. And another cool thing that we added is the AccuBase LED. I love the AccuBase LED. It just takes it and makes it one step easier because now there is a visual aspect to setting up AccuBase. So basically the LED, if you're wondering what it does, it essentially uh, tells you when AccuBase is engaged. So it's gonna help you when you're initially setting this up just to know that it's kicking in at the right time um, and that you got your threshold set correctly, basically. So pretty cool stuff there. Uh, GTO is built into the LC2i as well, uh, or 2i Pro, I should say, and then our new LMC uh, circuitry, the, or, or feature. LMC is load matching circuitry. Uh, Chris briefly mentioned this earlier. This is one of the little switches that is right on top. It says load select, and basically what we have built in, you guys, is all three models of LGDs built right in. So the AC LGD, the AC LGD 20, and the AC LGD 60 are all built right into the 2i Pro. All you or the technician or installer who's using this have to do is flip the switch to the correct setting and away we go. Um, for those of you that don't know what the uh, LGDs are or what they're used for, um, a lot of the newer vehicles that are on the road today, the factory sound systems in them require some sort of a load to be present on the speaker outputs, whether it's from the factory head unit or factory amplifier. So the problem is in a lot of factory systems, we are removing a factory speaker. Okay, let's say we're taking a factory woofer out of the rear deck of a Dodge Charger. Okay, we're taking that woofer out and instead of using that woofer, we're now taking the speaker wires that went to that woofer and we're feeding them into a high low device like the 2i Pro. Now with past devices, the problem would be that that factory amplifier or factory radio no longer sees the impedance load from that factory woofer. In older vehicles, it's not as big of an issue. With these newer vehicles, the amplifiers and head units have gotten smarter. They've programmed them now to recognize whether there's a load or not. And if there isn't a load present, a lot of weird things can happen. In a lot of Chrysler uh, family vehicles, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, Maserati, um, they won't put out any sound at all. It'll just throw an error code. Sometimes it'll even say in the gauge cluster, audio error or radio error, sound system error, whatever the code is, and you'll get no output. 
Um, sometimes it'll just cut output from that one channel. So there's a lot of different things that can happen when there's no load present. Now, previously, if you're using a different product or you're using the LC2i, um, it'll still work great. You just need to add one of our LGD products, the LGD, the LGD20, LGD60. But with the LC2i Pro, we don't have to worry about that. All we've got to do is slide the switch to the right setting and we're done. It really takes the guesswork out of it. It takes having to have extra parts on the shelf out of the equation. Everything's built right in, which is pretty slick. We now have three trigger modes as well. So when I say trigger modes, I mean the remote turn on sequence. Um, right here on the top of it, we have uh, our three different modes. So this has GTO, this has standard remote turn on just like the LC2i does, um, but we've also added a new turn on mode called audio turn on. Audio turn on is pretty slick. This is looking for anything above 40 millivolts on the speaker level inputs. So literally pretty much any signal coming into those inputs will trigger the LC2i Pro to turn on and tell it to put an output from its remote turn on out, thus turning on your amplifier or amplifiers and away we go. One other thing that's on top of our 2i Pro is our ground isolation switch. Uh, this has three different options for basically uh, isolating the power system ground from the audio system ground, helping to get rid of any sort of weird noise issues that may be plaguing uh, your aftermarket install. So very, very useful. Um, so the 2i Pro is a pretty cool piece. One of the thing I should mention before we move on is that the 2i Pro also includes the ACR1 dash control knob. So you do not have to purchase it separately. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, like Chris and I mentioned, um, next month, August 6th, will be our next training. And I think we'll cover uh, the 2i Pro in more detail on that training. So something to look forward to as well. Hey, Matthew, just because we're talking yeah. about bass, you know, um, I'm yeah. sitting here listening and hearing about product, but yeah. just thinking about bass in general in cars, like how many of us got into car audio because of bass? You yeah. know, bass... Base today is still going to be the number one difference that you're going to make in any customer or your car or anybody else's car if you don't have an amp and subwoofer. I mean, it, to this day, it's always going to, um, you know, be the biggest part of what we can do in aftermarket audio. Um, it's granted, usually the first thing to get added. Yep. Granted, yep. you know, today a lot of our customers are, you know, have aged a little bit more. They're not looking for as much base, but... Sure. I want to point out that there are some key uh, changes um, in the LC2i Pro that if you have an absolute bass head that wants to add some serious deep bass to their current factory system, the LC2i Pro is going to be the piece. It, that should 100% be the piece that you would recommend. If you're looking at the LC2i and the LC2i Pro, all those other advances with load generation um, coming with the ACR are all great. But um, a little secret for you know some of these guys on here today is that the LC2i Pro will be a better solution for anybody that um, wants that you know base to super low base. So we actually changed the you know our PFM um, circuit on there. So it will play lower than the LC2i. So that's just a little side note for everybody that joined us today. If you have a bass head and they, you know, want some serious low deep bass and they have a factory system, the LC2i Pro is by far, by far the best solution on the market now. I mean, it, that thing, I, I've, I've never been, Alex probably has never been, I don't know about you, but that is probably one of the most exciting products um, that has come out in base, in integration, um, because it's a single piece solution. The other day I was talking with yeah. another account and, um, you know, I'm like, well, what about this? And he says, well, you can add this. And what about that? Well, with AccuBase, load generation, playing lower than anything else, you know, you're not going to be able to get that seriously strong, deep, deep bass out of a, a, um, an, a non-amplified, so to speak, or, or active line out. Yeah, passive, yeah. Yeah, it's just not yeah. going to happen. So Yeah, if you, if you um, toss a $20, $30 adapter in there, it is not going to be the same thing, that's for sure. Yep, and, and you know, like talk well. about base, man, that's, that's, that's everything right there. You've got a customer factory system, they want 
even if they just want to do, you know, a preloaded 10 inch, you yeah. know, something that LC2i Pro is going to make a huge difference. Uh, it doesn't matter if that preloaded, preamplified, you know, uh, yeah. Bob. Even if it's a couple hundred dollar solution, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Yeah. It's still I mean, going to make it sound better, though. You're, it's going to make a right. huge, huge difference. You know, yeah. um, most of the preloaded stuff um, that might be able to, to handle, um, you know, an, a direct input that's preloaded, you know, mm -hmm. say, say you buy a box and RCA inputs, it's a powered box and it can handle up to, you know, 10, 16 volts of input. So maybe some of those factory systems, you can just go straight into it. I guarantee you, if any of you guys out there want to test me on it and try an LC2i Pro and not be amazed at the difference of just changing oh, yeah. input stage and having that true line driver, plain lower base, um, any of your customers out there, if they hear the difference, they're going to keep it. You know. Yeah. Um, I, for five years, have, have talked to people, hey, why are you selling that 800 watt amp um, without an LC2i? You're better off selling a 500 watt amp with an LC2i yep. on that factory amplified system. You Absolutely. Know? Um, you know, on top of that, this is, this is really such a cool solution in that you can add on to it. Um, so anyways, I'm just excited about bass. You know what I mean? Like, I think the yep. LC2i Pro has me more excited about bass. Our epicenter, you know, we continue to manufacture more and more and more and more epicenters um, every single day, every single week, every single year. The epicenter is a, a, a standard item, so to speak. Mm -hmm. If a customer ever had a base system with an epicenter, they will have an epicenter again, you know? Yeah. They, they will, we have customers that um, maybe on their fifth or sixth or seventh epicenter or customers that have a series one or series two epicenter from years ago that are moving it into their fifth or sixth or seventh car, you know, in the last 30 years and yeah. send them in and say, Hey, can you check this out? So base is exciting. Base is something that, you know, as a sales guy in our industry, as a, you know, uh, an aftermarket specialist, base mm -hmm. exciting guys. And yeah. we provide base solutions beyond what is normally available you know, everybody wants to talk DSP. We love talking DSP. We can talk DSP all day long. Sure. But base, base is really the foundation of a lot of why car audio is in the position it's in today. Yeah. Um, and we continue to grow that. And when I say that kind of base, I'm not talking about, you know, oh, I have to have, you know, you know, two 18s or right. no, 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 no. Lots or anything like that. Quality, yeah. deep base. And I'm not talking thousands of watts. I'm talking of a couple hundred, you know, 300, 400 yeah. watts. Our ACM 1300s that Matthew's going to talk about. Yeah. My goodness, you know, with the AccuBase, the ability to add the ACR, probably the most underutilized amps for that customer that comes in looking for a sound quality, a simple base add-on, you know. So I just went yeah. on a real big tangent there because I love bass. Bass is exciting. Bass is why I got into car audio. I think bass is why most guys got into car audio. You know what I mean? I, I really do. I think, I mean, I know, like I said at the beginning, it's why I got into car audio. I think it's why a lot of guys got into car audio. And I don't know. I think, uh, like you said, as a sales guy, there's nothing more fun, I think, to demo than bass. You know, nothing gets guys going, wow, or more excited than bass. And and just like you mentioned, just to reiterate, oh, I'm not talking a wall of 615s. Yeah, right. that's really fun. Um, right. But hopping in a daily driver with just a really nice high quality 10 and three to 500 watts changes everything. You know, and yeah. if you ask any of your customers, what's the number one thing that their system is lacking? Nine out of 10 are going to say base. Even if yeah. the car has a factory woofer nine out of 10 are going to say high quality base is what that car is lacking. Or even if they don't know what it's lacking, if you go out and listen to their car, like you should be before you sell them anything. Um, I guarantee you most of those cars do not have any sort of good, solid, low base foundation to build the rest of that system on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, the LC2i yeah. Pro is going to be amazing. And another thing like getting excited about base, I haven't sat in a high SPL vehicle or car or anything like that. You know, I've been, you know, 
who knows how many times back and forth across the country at different events and doing stuff like that. I haven't sat in them, but you know what? Like if I did sit in one, I already know how I would feel. I would be, I would be all giddy. I'd be like a little, I'd be like <laughs> 17 all over again, you yep. know? And I mean, if, if my ears were, you know, hearing bass above a hundred and anywhere close to 140, I'd just be like, Oh, I cut, cut no more, you know, get me out of here. <laughs> But it is fun. It is yeah. um, a lot to uh, to talk about. Um, so have fun with bass. Sorry, yeah. I'll let you get back oh, you're, to the product stuff. You're and, good. And talking, you're good. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. So with that, let's dive into um, a couple of other things that are going to help with bass. So we talked about OEM integration. We talked about some of the technology it takes um, to get great bass in vehicles today. Um, but the next thing we're talking about is processing. And I mean bass processing. So we are going to talk for a minute about the Epicenter, the original bass processor. Okay. Um, nobody's been doing bass processing as long as audio control has. Uh, the Epicenter is an incredibly powerful, cool piece. And like I mentioned earlier, if you've never played with one, maybe you're even somebody who's sold them over and over again, but you've never had one in your own vehicle or really got a chance to experience a song with and without the epicenter it really is a monumental difference it is not just a toy it's not a novelty it's not a oh you know they just make songs have a ton of bass that they don't have no it, it genuinely makes a huge impact on your music um, and another common misconception i think with the epicenter there's a couple of things that are are, are misconceptions um, surrounding the epicenter and that is um, one of which is that well it, it's designed for songs that don't have bass Yes and no, you know, just because um, you don't listen to classic rock, which was recorded without a lot of bass, or you don't listen to um, Hispanic music that doesn't have a lot of bass to begin with. Maybe you listen to EDM and hip hop, okay, which already has lots of bass in it. That doesn't mean you can't benefit from an epicenter. And there's a couple of reasons why. A, not every song has the type of bass that you want it to have. Not every song hits as hard as you want it to hit or plays as low as you want it to play. The epicenter is great at doing that. Now, if you take a song that already has lots of bass and then crank the epicenter all the way up, is it going to sound goofy? Yes, absolutely. Okay. If you already take a song that has a ton of bass and add a ton more to it, yes, you could potentially overdrive that system and make it sound weird. Um, but if you responsibly use the epicenter and, and use that knob like you should, you can make even a song that already has strong bass be even better. So that's one of those things to remember. Um, one of the other things at the epicenter, you guys, is that, again, if it doesn't say the words the epicenter on it, and I covered this in the epicenter training a little bit, uh, but if it doesn't say the epicenter, it's not an audio control epicenter, okay? Yes, there are a million ripoff companies out there that are trying to duplicate what we've done with the epicenter. There are copycats. There are always going to be copycats that want to, you know, try to copy what we've done with the epicenter. But again, if it doesn't say audio control on it, it doesn't say the epicenter on it, it's not the same thing. There are plenty of reviews out there on YouTube and stuff from independent guys that bought an audio control epicenter and a fill in the blank, you know, a knockoff. And they will tell you that they don't sound the same. They don't do the same thing. They can try, they can try to get close, but it's never going to be the same. It's not the same quality. It's not the same process. The epicenter is a patented piece, okay? So it's not going to be the same. Um, one of the other things that I like to bring up with the epicenter is, you know, what it actually does to the music and, and you know, why we need it in some of the cars that we have today. And that's uh, a prime example. We have a rep down in Arizona, has a newer Honda Accord. Um, these newer Honda Accords, this is like a 17 or 18 model, base model Honda Accord. And these cars don't have base roll off. These cars have a permanent high pass filter set at about 60 to 70 hertz. So if you have a permanent high pass filter in that car and it's really not playing much of anything under 60 hertz or so, you could add the biggest amplifiers and the biggest woofers available and it's still really never going to play low, right? You're going to get some punchy higher bass out of that system, but you're never going to get that really satisfying you know, shake your insides low bass um, out of a system that's crossed over at 80 hertz and only playing, or, or excuse me, 60, and only playing 60 hertz and up. So the epicenter comes in really, really handy when we're talking about some of those newer vehicles. That Accord is just one that I'll mention. Um, 
but there are lots of them out there. I personally worked on a Range Rover that, that suffered from the same symptoms. Um, the Epicenter made that vehicle go from really underwhelming to fantastic. Um, so when we're looking at the Epicenter, here's a couple of RTA screenshots of just a before and after. This is the same song played at the same volume played through the same system, everything. It's just a before and after of basically, you know, turning the epicenter uh, two thirds or three quarters of the way up playing that same song. So you can see the difference it makes visually using an RTA, um, obviously there on your screen. And then I wanted to talk briefly about too, just the, the family of Epicenter products. So the, the traditional um, Epicenter concert series, or what I sometimes call the trunk mount Epicenter, because traditionally it gets mounted in the trunk near the amplifiers. Um, these are gonna be probably your most common Epicenter products. Um, these are available in black and white. It is the only product that we still offer in the, the classic Sierra white, I believe it's called. Um, and that's a little bit of a just nostalgic throwback for you a little bit there. Um, but we do still offer the, the Epicenter concert series in that, in that classic white, which is kind of cool. And then we also offer the Epicenter Plus and the Epicenter in Dash. Um, I did a whole training on just Epicenters a couple of weeks ago. So if you guys are interested in diving really deep into the Epicenters and all of them, you can of course uh, go back a few weeks and watch that training as well. Um, but I just wanted to bring up for a second there the different models that are available. For those of you that aren't familiar, the Epicenter Plus is great for doing what we were just talking about, which was OEM integration and just adding some great bass onto a factory sound system because the Epicenter Plus has high level inputs. So you don't need uh, necessarily a high to low adapter and then your Epicenter, you just need an Epicenter Plus. Uh, there are a lot of guys out there that are running an LC2i and then out of the LC2i, they're going into an Epicenter. Now, unless they need the AccuBase that's built into that LC2i, they could have just used an Epicenter Plus and achieved essentially the same results. So that's just a, a cool piece that I think gets um, looked over or passed over quite a bit, and it does make a huge difference. So definitely a cool one. The Epicenter in-dash is neat as well. It does everything that the Epicenter does, but it has a 160 dB capable SPL meter, as well as a voltage meter built right into the face and switchable illumination on the knobs uh, that can be red or blue. So it's a half in chassis, something you can mount below the radio or in the glove box under the dash in the console you know wherever you want it to go so for those vehicles that maybe don't have room under a seat or in the trunk but maybe have some room vertically in the center console or something like that the epicenter in dash is, is certainly a, a cool solution for those ones Matthew I want to hit uh, on a couple of sales points with the epicenter yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in, anybody out there who works at a retail store or if you're a consumer out there and you have a base package or anything like that the epicenter really is you know something that we should we should be talking about more um the reality is we just can't make them fast enough right now for everybody out there and we're wrapping that up but um being said now is a great time to look at the epicenter um we have decided um we will actually finalize it tomorrow but uh for anybody here in the u.s we will be extending our um pricing holiday um for another month so uh now is a great time to get the epicenter right um it's it's uh you know by far the best selling base processor of all time absolutely and if you're in sales or at a retail uh, location and you're doing stuff and you install a base package i would just talk um um, about the selling uh, aspect of the epicenter, you know, because it will make an absolute huge difference in any base system out there. So if you're in a retail store environment um, and you are delivering a base package, so a customer comes in, they have a factory system, they bought a preloaded box, um, you know, got an amp and a subwoofer installed to their factory system, whatever the case may be. Um, I would always suggest even if you've already done the package, say the customer wanted to spend 800 bucks, right? They came in, they, they spent that $800, they got their amp and subwoofer installed, they absolutely love it. You should still talk about the epicenter. When you turn yeah, over- plant the seed for sure. Yeah, when you turn over those keys to the consumer, uh, you know, you should be saying, hey, by the way, if you ever want a little bit more, or if you listen to classic rock or any kind of different music, come and ask me about the epicenter. Boom, mm -hmm. you know, hand the key over and then that's it, you know? Um, planting um, seeds for better audio 
is what we should be really passionate about. Like, you know, we always want to take our audio to the next level, right? Like, even in my, my own house or in my own car, you know, uh, we have some new products coming up and I'm going to get to test next week. I, I absolutely don't want to tear into it, my car because it is phenomenal. But the time, I'm so excited about it because it could be better. You know, right. what I mean? like, it could always be better, right? Yeah, it can always yeah. be better. And I think the epicenter and, and, and base is just another way of it can always be better. You know, yeah. I still have an epicenter 600 in my car. Um, yeah. Do I use the epicenter effect much? Not at all. But, you know, if I'm listening to, you know, something and, and I'm sitting, sometimes, you know, I'll take my wife, we'll just sit in the car and listen to one of her favorite songs. And she's not a bass head or anything, but, you know, I can still use that epicenter effect and give it you know, the punchy kickiness that kind of makes, you know, your, the hair on the back of your neck stand up like, Ooh, that's a, that's neat. That's cool. So yep. um, talk about the epicenter more. If you have never used an epicenter, try one out. Uh, you know, it's uh, I, I guarantee you that when that one song comes on and you hear it bumping I can say or have that deeper bass response that you've never heard before it's exciting it's fun you know audio is fun it's passionate you know we should be just like you know just enjoy yeah, car audio is fun. Time. yeah car audio is fun and car audio is supposed to be fun and that's really what you know I think in um in retail and stuff like that I think what a lot of guys sometimes forget with the day-to-day humdrum of running a business, running a shop, dealing with customers, dealing with paperwork and phone calls and blah, 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 is that we sell fun, you guys. Like we don't sell boring stuff. We don't sell tires. We don't sell brakes. You know, we sell fun. We sell a experience. We sell a, a like Chris said, raise the hairs on the back of your neck experience. Um, I, I guarantee you that the guy at the tire shop does not sell a raise the hair on the back of your neck experience. You know, that's something that you get to do in your store. And that's why demo cars and demo rooms and things are so important, I think, is showing someone a product, talking about a product. You know, you can talk features and, and specs till you're blue in the face. Um, but until they hear it, it, it's just not the same. You know, hearing it in a car, hearing it in a demo room, that's where the experience part comes into play. And, you know, let's face it, a lot of brick and mortar stores need to separate themselves from, you know, online stuff and this and that. What better way to do that than demo something that they can't do elsewhere? You can't demo an epicenter online. You know, yeah. you, you can't. You can look at pictures. You can look at specs. You can talk about it. Hell, you can watch my training on it if you want. But you can't experience it until it's actually in a car and, and or in a demo in a store and you actually get to experience it. And experiencing them is, is really, you know, the fun part, in my opinion. So there's a, there's um, a couple of Facebook questions that we should get yeah. to. Before we get back into some of the product. Yeah. Um, Ziggy was saying, asking if we'll ever do training um, like this on EQS, EQL, EQX the 6XS and 2XS. And, you know, Ziggy, those, those products have been around a long time. And um, we have to, you know, do a, have a quick moment and play taps, uh, so to speak, <laughs> 2XS, which um, last week became discontinued. Um, those products have kind of aged enough that uh, sourcing products and parts for those has become difficult. So um, we probably will not be doing specific trainings on some of those. Yeah. Uh, the the parts uh, affected were the EQS and the 2XS. Just as a side note, um, those those products will now um, be going away. Um, somebody asked, I've always heard that the epicenter should only be used on subwoofers in a sealed enclosure. Is there any truth? That's the first I've ever heard that. So I think a lot of a lot of people, you know, um, especially going back. Um, the epicenter has been around 30 years and right. I think a lot of times, um, if you go back to where that might've started as mm -hmm. a rumor or something like that was during a time when a lot of amplifiers didn't have as robust crossovers, uh, as robust, uh, you know, subsonic, um, subsonic filters mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So 
That being said, that is not true. Um, and the epicenter will be beneficial to any base package where the customer or you play a song where you want to experience deeper bass. That can be handled lower than the crossover point on a downstream amplifier or whatever else. So, yeah. um, Ported box, sealed box, infinite baffle, all of them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, and Any other questions before we move on? Nope, go for it. Cool. All right, so with that, let's get into uh, amplifiers a little bit. So we are gonna talk, oh, actually, sorry, before we dive into amplifiers, I did wanna mention, since we talked about AccuBase and we talked about all this cool technology and things that our DM608, our DM810, um, processors, real DSP processors, do have AccuBase built in, and it's available to use on all of the channels that are in that processor. So you can AccuBase all eight outputs or all 10 outputs, as well as our LC series and D series amplifiers have AccuBase built in as well. So just a little side note on that before we get into other amps. So we're going to talk about three different amplifiers today. Our dedicated subwoofer mono amplifiers are what we're going to talk about since today is all about bass. So the first one I want to talk about is the ACM uh, 1.300. Really cool amplifier in our ACM series. That is this little guy. The ACM is such a, a cool little product. Um, they're very, very small. As you can see, I'm holding one up here. Uh, in my other hand is an LC2i. So if you have a look at the LC2i up against the ACM, you can see we're about maybe three inches, maybe three to four inches longer. Um, but otherwise it is physically about the same size. A um, little bit thicker, not by much. So if you think about that, the LC2i is installed in many, many vehicles for just quick base add-on packages with OEM systems because it'll take the high voltage, uh, high level input because it has AccuBase built in and that sort of thing. But what's neat is the uh, ACM 1.300 also has those features. So not only do you have a 300 watt mono amplifier stable down to two ohms, but you also have AccuBase built in. You have high level inputs that can handle up to 40 volts of input. You have a port for the ACR1 dash control knob. So if you wanna add a standalone dash control for that woofer, you've got a port to do that. The, the ACR1 knob is sold separately from this amplifier, excuse me. And then we have our basic controls on the top here. The cool thing with the ACMs, if you're not familiar with these, is they do have a top cover plate that can uh, be mounted like so and just look traditional. You can also mount it upside down. If you need to mount the amp upside down if the connection's facing up, you can still make it look like you installed it properly. Um, and the plate can even be mounted on the back of the amplifier if you need to backload it to a panel or flush it or something like that. Another really cool thing I've been seeing some shops do lately is they've been flipping these panels over to the blank side and they've been mounting them blank. And they do this for a couple of reasons. There's a couple of shops that are doing this. One of them is doing it so that it looks like an OEM amplifier because they are putting it near other OEM products and they wrap their wiring and Tessa tape just like the factory with the candy cane stripes. Um, and literally most, most dealers will never look behind that panel and go, oh wow, there's an aftermarket amplifier. They're gonna basically think this is factory if they didn't know any better. And a lot of the other shops are taking this top panel and they're actually lasering their logo or the vehicle logo into it, which is pretty cool. I've seen some really cool stuff done with that lately as well. So the top cover plate on these is neat, um, but the 1.300, the, the biggest thing is just physical size versus power and um, you know value. Uh, this amp in my mind is the ultimate amplifier for the guy that comes in at 4.30 on a Saturday and says, hey, I'm going on a road trip tomorrow. I need a base package. The ACM amp should be your go-to. Um, it's got everything you need built in. It's got enough power to run a lot of prefab, you know, single 10, dual 10, single 12, maybe even dual 12 packages. Um, and nobody ever really believes that these are as powerful as they are until they get one in their hands. There's some cool videos of them out there. Uh, Steve Mead's done a review on them recently that you can check out on YouTube, uh, going on and on about how powerful these are. He actually did some um, uh, amp dyno testing on these as well. And you can see how much power he really got out of them if you want to check out that video. Uh, but the rated uh, numbers are there on your screen, 300 at 2 ohm, 175 at 4 ohm. And I have a, a message from a uh, technician yesterday. I'll, I'll, I'll keep him, um, uh, I, won't, I won't reveal his identity, but he's a top uh, 25 tech. And the exact quote from him was, these little amps are awesome. I put one in a Benz and it did better than the OE amp. 
I love the metal finish too. You can put the plates on upside down if they don't want the logo showing. I also laser etch on them pretty easily. Super awesome. Also, no input gain blind spots. They sound good in everything. So that was an exact quote from him last night sent to my phone. Uh, pretty cool stuff. You know, I mean, to hear that from uh, right from an installer's mouth um, is it, pretty cool. I didn't prompt him to give me that quote. He texted me out of the blue and just wanted to tell me how great he thought they were. So that's pretty cool to hear. So uh, with the ACM, you know, again, if you're thinking about dropping in an LC2i and a couple hundred watt, you know, two to 500 watt simple mono amp with a, a basic, you know, single 10 in the back seat of a truck or a single woofer in a hatchback or a sedan, um, try an ACM 1.300 if you've never tried one before. I have yet to find anybody that wasn't just blown away by the output from such a small amplifier. So moving on to some of our other amplifiers going up in power, we'll talk about the LC 1.800. This is our 800 watt LC series monoblock. So this is a full size amplifier. These are fan cooled. Um, these are still physically not very large. Um, you know, the ACM was tiny. This is about the size of oh, two and a half ACMs, something along those lines. So physically not that big. Uh, 800 watts RMS at two ohm, 500 at four ohm, great power. These are really solid, robust amplifiers. But here's what makes these different, you guys. There are obviously, as you know, there's a million sub amplifiers out there that could deliver 500 watts or 800 watts. That's not what makes these special. What makes them special is their input section and the way they sound. They sound powerful, they sound awesome. Um, it's not just sloppy, dirty bass. They're really clean and controlled and tight sounding. Um, but the input section on these, I think, is really what shines, okay? So on the LC series, uh, we have our high level input. The high level input will accept up to 40 volts of high level in. So again, you can feed up to a 400 watt factory amplified signal straight into the LC series amplifier and away you go. You can use GTO that's built into this to turn it on. You don't have to run a remote turn on lead if, you, uh, if, if you're working on a vehicle that doesn't have one readily available. Um, <clears throat> and then this does have the ACR1 dash control port as well. So if we want to add a dash control knob to this one, you can certainly do so. And also on this guy built in, I don't know if uh, you can see it that well on here, but we do have AccuBase built into this as well. So if you love the AccuBase portion of an LC2i, the easiest way to think of this, you guys, is essentially there's an LC2i built into the LC1.800. So when you're looking at this and you're thinking about, you know, uh, cost and value for your customer or for you, and you're thinking maybe, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred watt amp plus an LC2i, you're adding up the cost and all that stuff. Think about doing an LC1800 instead. It's got all of that built in and more, um, plus, of course, our five-year warranty on there as well. So really, really cool amplifier. Um, we are kind of running out of time, so I am going to get on to the next product here, which is our LC1.1500. So, you know what? I do. Want, let we let's get some a couple more questions in because because okay, uh, sure. the I think you know the base thing is 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 really really important to you know since that's what we're talking about. So yeah. the question on the LC2i um, speaker simulation. Um, if you change the subwoofer, so like the ACM 1300, somebody was asking about a vehicle in specific. If it has a factory subwoofer in it, all right, and you want to replace a subwoofer and put in an aftermarket subwoofer where the factory goes in like a baffle or something like that, the ACM 300 is perfect for that kind of a, a situation. Um, yep. It's going to give you a lot more power, a lot cleaner power. And that goes into the next question, talking about the THD on the ACMs. No, that is not a typo. Like, these things are seriously good. I mean, probably one of the cleanest engineered um, small amplifiers of all time. The audio quality um, on the ACMs is, is I mean, it is ridiculous compared to other micro amplifiers. So it yeah, is one of those things that I always say with the ACMs is that audio control didn't make ACMs because everybody else was making little amps. No. We made the ACMs because we wanted to make little amps that actually sound good because yes. there's a little, there's a lot of little amplifiers out there that literally just make dirty power. And yes, they're small. Ours yep. are small, but actually sound good. So uh, that's the big difference to me. But here's, here's a great question. Um, yep. The epicenter should never be used on today's music. It, it's great for music that's lacking. What are your thoughts, Chris? And 
I'm going to tell you, my thoughts are that is absolutely not true. That's like telling me what kind of music I should listen to. Yeah. And um, uh, if I listen to music and I want the epicenter, I want the epicenter. Then I, yeah. I can turn that on and have control over it. So um, I don't think it matters. I think it matters what genre of music you're listening to more so. If you are strictly listening to bass heavy you know, modern EDM type music, stuff like that, and you listen to nothing else, then, then sure, use the LC2i Pro. It's going to play lower. Um, you can hook it up to your factory system. You can have some bass compensation without creating that octave lower bass note that some music is lacking. And, and even in the question, you know, it, it said it's lacking. Um, no, because different music lacks in different ways, you know. Mm -hmm. My wife listens to nothing but opera, you know, um, or that's a bad example, but, um, you know, banda music, you know, the, the Spanish music, you know, um, there's been hundreds of thousands of songs that have been written, uh, you know, in the last few years and every single one of them could benefit from, from the epicenter. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's my personal take on it. I think it's it's another powerful tool to make audio better. Um, yeah. and our, uh, I think the big difference there too is that it, it's how it's used. You know, I mean, even if you um, let's use country as an example. So a lot of modern country music that's on the radio today does have bass, right? Mm -hmm. Country music ten years ago really didn't have much. Um, and, and so let's say you listen to some country that is ten years old and you want to make it add some bass. Great, the epicenter can do that. Let's say you're listening to today's country that does have bass, but that doesn't necessarily mean that every song is going to hit as low as you want it to, or it's going to punch as hard as you want it to. And so the epicenter would be great for that. Even though the song may be a, a 2019, 2020, you know, perfectly recorded song, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have the bass that you want it to have. Now, like I kind of mentioned earlier too, on that song that has bass already, would I say run the epicenter up three quarters or all the way? No, that's going to sound goofy. It's going to be really artificial and it's just going to make your woofer go nuts. But to turn up the epicenter a little bit and just make that song have a little bit lower, deeper bass than it has, absolutely. Why not? You know, why not make it sound better? So that's, that's my take on it. Yeah, you were, you're, you're talking about that. And, you know, um, two, weekend, two weeks ago, uh, when you were doing the training, I wasn't with you guys. I was, I, I went for a seven hour drive with my family. Right. And we were actually listening to country. Imagine that because I'm a country <laughs> fan, but my wife wanted to listen to some country mm -hmm. All the songs were kind of stoic, whatever, typical country stuff. And yep. I distinctly remember like one song came on and the, the bass, like you could tell that it was made for like a country dance hall or something yep. like, that. you know, had that deeper, you know, uh, base to it and it was noticeable you know what I mean so here we are listening to country and listening to you know you know I, I had to endure probably 40 countries <laughs> during that drive and one of them stood out to me as having a good bass line that was noticeable in the car yep. every single one of those 39 other songs could have benefited from the epicenter sure so Agreed. that's my take <laughs> cool all right, so let's get into uh, the LC1500 before we're totally out of time here. Um, this is the last product we're going to talk about before we wrap things up. So the LC1500, uh, LC1.1500 is our biggest, baddest powerhouse mono subamp, okay? Um, now, again, we wanted to make a big, bad powerhouse subamp that still sounds good. That's, that's the key there. Um, because, again, are there companies out there that make amplifiers that produce... 10 times this power, sure there are. If you want 15,000 watts of dirty power, there are companies out there to get that from. Um, that's not us, right? We build stuff that sounds good. We are about making good sound great. So even if we are gonna make something that delivers 1,500, closer to 2,000 watts, um, we're gonna want it to still do it while sounding good and being clean and being tight and having really nice reproduction, right? And that's really what we're all about. And that's what this 1500 watt amp does. So one of my favorite things about the 1500 as well is that again, chassis size, this is not a huge amp. It is, you know, it's got some heft to it. When you take it out of the box, it feels like it's a quality piece because it is, but it's not a surfboard amp like we dealt with 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, when I first started getting into this and they were really hard to find a spot for in a car because they were so big. 
this is still a chassis size that will fit under most front seats in most sedans these days or most trucks these days. So it's a, it's a convenient size, even though it packs a, a serious punch as far as power is concerned. Um, one of the other things is like the LC1800, this has our input section built in. Think of it as if there's an LC2i built inside of this amplifier, because that's basically what there is. We have the input capacity to handle 40 volts of high level input. We also have AccuBase built in, and we have our milk system, the milk lights, which is maximum input level control. So there is a little LED indicator on here for the guys that don't have an oscilloscope, don't have the, the, the professional tools to set this up or a DD1. Um, this is going to give you a basic idea of how to set the gains um, and help you to just make sure that it is at least in the ballpark of how it should be set up. Now, is having a milk source clip light the same thing as having a DD1 or an O-scope or a DMRTA? No, of course not. Um, however, again, for the consumer or for the guy who doesn't have those tools at his disposal, uh, it's certainly a helpful feature that's built in. Um, the other nice thing that's on these is input terminals. This will accept one aught power cable and ground straight in. And by the looks of the fusing here, we've got 160 amps worth of fusing. Um, you know, of course, that doesn't always mean everything, but it does go to show that this seriously does produce the power that we are saying it does. There are also some great videos out there and some great tests of this. Um, Big D at Old School Car Stereo does a review of this on YouTube where he does a amp dyno test, and we got over 2,000 watts out of this 1,500 watt amplifier. So um, much like, you know, the amplifiers of yesteryear where they were all underrated, so are all of these. Every amp on this table today is underrated. We would much rather talk about real numbers. You'll notice that none of our amplifiers have peak power or max power ratings. We don't mess with that. We go straight to RMS, numbers that are actually achievable, numbers that these amplifiers will do all day long. So when we're talking about bass, let's talk about amps that will actually do what the box says that they'll do. That's what we produce is amps that really do what they say they do. So you know that you're going to get something that's reliable and something that sounds great while doing it. So um, as far as other features on this, it's similar to the LC1.800, just about twice the power, um, stable down to two ohms. So you don't have to load this thing down to one ohm to try to get all the power out of it. You can run it at two ohms. You can run a single dual voice coil four ohm sub, the most common coil configuration out there, and get a ton of power out of here. Or if you're running two subs, you can run two, two DVC two ohm subs and uh, get four ohms, or, or excuse me, uh, get two ohms at the amplifier. You know, there's a number of different configurations to get the 1500 watts out of this amp, um, but it is a powerhouse. Both of these LC amplifiers also have our, um, uh, protection system built into them. So of course they have a protection LED on the uh, product itself. They also have the blue glowing LED out of the top of the heat sinks here. The combination of the blue glow and the red um, uh, protection LED actually can tell you what's going on with the amplifier. So if there is a short, if there is a blown woofer, or if there is a problem with the amp or the install, you can quickly take a glance at these and know exactly what's going on with them without having to tear the whole thing apart. It's more than just a, hey, I'm in protect mode. It actually goes down to tell you one of, I think, seven or eight things that could be going on. So very, very useful as far as that's concerned. Matthew, so I want to touch on some points on yeah. the base amplifiers. Yeah. This be for all the amplifiers from the ACM1300, the LC1800, the LC1500. They are all understated amplifiers, okay? And I, and I want to bring that up on the input side of things as well, because a lot of people think, hey, I'm doing this bass amplifier, I should use some kind of an LOC or something like that. And with most manufactured bass amplifiers, I would agree with you, you know? You have to be very, very mindful of what kind of signal you're dealing with on the input side of, of things. So somebody had asked if they should use a line driver or something like that going into one of these amplifiers. And that very much depends on what the source is, you know? Um, the source affects everything that happens throughout your audio stream, you know, through every product downstream. So it really depends on what you're working with. I will say on almost all factory systems, if you ever do one of these amplifiers and you're not seriously impressed, it would be worth your time to see what kind of signal you're working with. Because mm -hmm. there may be applications like that 29 on the cord where you should probably use a pigtail into the RCA inputs, all right? 
All these base amplifiers are made to add on to any kind of base package, whether that's a factory, factory amplified or aftermarket. So it's important to know what kind of voltage you're working with, all right, and use either the speaker level or the RCA depending on what you're dealing with. So if I had a 2019 vehicle that came into my bay and it was a non-amplified base model audio, I would certainly take my DMRTA or my uh, DMM and see what kind of signal I'm working with. And then I might just right from the get go, wire the speaker levels into the RCA input and yeah. really get the most signal going into the amplifier section as possible through the input. So we give you a lot more varying input voltage range than any other manufacturer. So, you know, we want to see from, you know, uh, up to 40 volts of input. Well, you know, not all cars have 40 volts of input, right? Sure. So let's take a look, know what we're working with, and then use it properly so that you can get the most out of the amplifier. So, um, no, you, you should never have to use in almost all applications a line driver with these. If Agreed. you're a marine system and you have RCA outputs that is really, really low, like, you know, milliamps, sure, that's all, that obviously might be an option. Yeah, especially on a long run of cable like in a marine system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, there's I think different applications. It's 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 really hard to answer specifically one question for yeah. you know two hundred thousand different cars. That, <laughs> you know, yeah. so and I um, think that comes down to um, something we've talked about in the past, which is you just mentioned it, and that is sometimes using the RCA input for high level signals. I think so many guys are really hung up on, hey, I'm grabbing speaker level signal in a car. This is a factory sound system, so there are no RCAs. So automatically in their head, they go, okay, I can't use the RCA inputs. They automatically yeah. assume that because I tied into speaker wires and I'm running speaker wire to the amplifier for signal, that means that they have to go into the high level input and that's not the case. Um, Chris and I have talked about this in previous trainings about tech support and frequently asked questions questions and he just touched on it a second ago and that is if you're ever not super happy with the output from any of these amplifiers um, a you should be testing to see what that signal is but Chris and I have said in the past anything up to about 10 volts I would seriously consider going into those RCA uh, line level inputs instead because if you think about what the high level input on these amplifiers is doing it's able to accept up to 40 volts like Chris just mentioned so what's it have to do with that signal if it's able to go up to 40 volts it has to take that signal squash it down and then feed it through the input section right well if we don't need to squash it down because it's already a fairly low signal maybe it's only four or five volts something like that coming from just a non-amplified basic sound system in a, in a vehicle Feed it into those RCAs instead. Take a set of scrap RCAs you have, plug them in here, cut off the ends, and then wire it to those speaker level inputs. Or there are lots of wiring companies and brands that sell RCA to speaker wire adapters. Plug one of those in and I can pretty much guarantee you, you will be happy with the output if you weren't five minutes ago. So um, that's a great little tech tip for those of you that have maybe tried one of those or are thinking of trying one of these in the near future. So that pretty much wraps up the, the product stuff that we were going to talk about. Do you have any other questions that came from yeah, anybody? There, there's a couple more. I, I think we Great. should answer let's a few more. And, yeah, let's do it. Um, somebody asked, I have the DQ61. Will the epicenter help my subwoofers out? And Chris in the Philippines had a similar question. Do I need the epicenter with an LC7i or is AccuBase good enough? So I, you know, when reading those questions, I just had this thought like, you know, the epicenter really isn't helping your woofers out. It's helping your music out where act base is helping your equipment out okay yep. so, so your equipment with AccuBase is generally the factory oe system and it lacks bass because they use software to take the bass out at higher volumes AccuBase can help you put that back in the epicenter is is not going to change that the epicenter is going to create bass an octave lower than the lowest bass note at c so two different animals. So if you want help with your music because music you're listening to doesn't have that deep bass impact. If you, if you like I was the other day on a road trip and one song played deep bass really, really well and then it goes to a bunch of others that don't, 
the epicenter will help your DQ61. It will help yep. your SC7I because it's helping your music. It's getting bass into that music that doesn't have it. Okay? Yeah. That's a great way to describe it is helping your music versus helping your system. And and I talked a little bit about the difference between the two when we first started this, the difference between AccuBase and Epicenter. And I uh, just to reiterate again, I think it's important to know that they are not the same thing. You know, AccuBase mm -hmm. doesn't do what an Epicenter does, and an Epicenter does not do what AccuBase does. So just just to kind of reiterate on that a little bit. I mean, since we're since we're talking about bass and we want to get the most out of our systems, you know, yeah, um, there there's a lot of applications where you know, an ACM 1300 is going to get you better results than if you're, you know, bought a, a, an LOC with an 800 watt amp. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it really depends on the application and stuff like that. But two of the biggest misunderstood things are, you know, how do I get good bass out of my system? What kind of music do I listen to? But also the, the input side of things. I mean, yeah. Um, Knowing what you're working with is a huge, huge, uh, that's the biggest step, you know, uh, when you're, when you're planning a system, like, okay, what do I have to do to get the most out of this? And that's why, you know, we can constantly make more product. We can constantly make better product. We can make bigger amplifiers, but if, if the source, whether it's in your music where the epicenter can help or, um, the, when I say, when I, I mean music, when the music you're source material. Right, yeah, source yeah. material versus a source, source, unit. source like an OE yeah. system that is doing everything in its power to take bass away so you don't blow your factory speakers. Um, you know, two totally different animals. Um, yeah. And understanding that as well as when to use RCA versus high level, you know. Yep. Um, everybody calls them speaker level. I call them speaker level myself. But, I, uh, you know, that does paint a picture like, oh, if it's speaker, it goes in speaker level. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So Well, and I think that that's something that as an industry, this industry just uh, fails at a little bit sometimes is recognizing how important the input side of everything is. Everyone is so wrapped up in output, the input gets shoved to the back burner. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, all of us sometimes are just you know, it's easy. Output is fun, right? I mean, output is the fun part. Output is what everybody talks about. It's the, it's the exciting specs and all that stuff. Nobody wants to read input specs. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the input section is so important and so critical to getting great sound and an amazing bass that it just doesn't get talked about as much as it should. And it doesn't get as much focus as it really should, I think. Um, so I think that's a really good point that, that, you know, most guys just don't worry about the input they're just worried about having enough power so output is all they're worried about how many woofers how big what's the yeah. box how much wattage that's all output stuff right but we do need to be worried about input because just like many things in life you know your system is only going to be as good as the weakest link and if the weak link is the system or, or the, the source uh, material or the source signal coming from that factory head unit it doesn't matter what you put in right it's not going to be great unless there's all of it is set up to be great. So, yep. So, all that to be said, I'm going to say my last uh, uh, 30 seconds here. The LC2i Pro is now shipping. If you have a factory system and want some banging deep bass and not let uh, a passive device or going straight into a, somebody else's aftermarket amplifier, the LC2i Pro is absolutely the product you should be using. Um, $129 US retail, comes with the base knob, has load generation. So we don't care if you have a, you know, 2015 to 2021 Dodge Chrysler Jeep Maserati Fiat. It has load matching circuitry built into it, plays deeper base, uh, five-year warranty. Just that product is probably one of the most exciting products we, we've worked on. Um, I will say we will start working on another base product. Um, but we'll probably be a year, year and a half to, to actual creation. And just having this time with you guys today has me even more excited about it. And I'm sure Matthew yeah. and Alex are, um, oh, yeah. you know the what i Wheels are turning about. too, I do, yep, yep. yep. But um, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and the epicenter, so uh, God bless the epicenter. Um, <laughs> it saved uh, so much music out there that lacks bass and good bass response and impact. And, uh, you know, so um, the epicenter, we're, uh, 
we, you know, I, it, very early on, I talked about adding, you know, eight production benches into uh, the factory just in the last couple of weeks. Um, many of those benches are going to be dedicated to the epicenter because um, so many people um, are spending more time in their cars uh, because of the travel and everything else. Uh, the epicenter is going through the roof. So thank you guys. I'm going to say thanks on my part for joining us. I'll let Matthew wrap it all up. And um, I hope you guys are all healthy, safe, and well. And um, let's sell some base over the next few months, man. I'm, yeah. You know? So. Summer is base season. Summer is all about base in my mind. I mean, that's what yeah. I think of when I was working in a shop was summer was base season, man. We sold more base and more boxes and more big amps and woofers and had more people come in about base in the winter, in the summer months than any other time. And there's just something about, you know, we talked earlier about how car audio is selling a feeling, it's selling excitement, it's selling, you know, some of that passion. Um, to me, when I think about summer, I think about my car. I think about cruising with the windows down. I think about cruising with some big bass. You know, I mean, those are the things that in my mind kind of all go hand in hand. So like Chris said, let's sell some bass this summer. Um, we talked about all sorts of great stuff today to make that happen. And so, yeah, I want to thank you guys for joining us today.